So good morning, everyone at Facebook St. John's. Hope you're doing well. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. And certainly let me take a moment to wish to all of the ladies and women who have influenced us in our lives, our aunts, our cousins, uh, colleagues, uh, sisters, and of course our mothers. And I'm very certain that Claire and Heather and Megan have enjoyed being around and learning from their moms as well as their Yaya and their Mimer and their Mama. For me, I had a grandmother, I had a mother, and I had a great grandmother. And then I had Mrs. Wilson. And I can assure you those four ladies influence then has influenced me now and will continue to influence me for a long time. These 50 days for me between Lent and eat and between, excuse me, Easter day and Pentecost, are very important for me. It's when I solidify what I was trying to do during Lent, uh, take on some things during this 50 days uh, so that this quarter of time, 90 days, I can add to, I can take away, I can improve, uh, but it's a very important 50 days for me. So I'm quite excited uh, about uh, the outcome uh, come Pentecost because I asked myself two questions. Um, I've asked them for some time. Uh, what did I learn and what did I do differently? And I thought about those two questions in context with today and Mother's Day and uh, our lessons, because I was wondering, so what did Saul's mother say to him, uh, particularly with everything that Saul was doing? And by the way, we don't know a whole lot about his mother. Uh, we know about his dad just a little bit. Um, so I decided that I would take a a license with you and tell you a story about a conversation based on the lessons that might have happened. So Saul has just walked home. He's asked his mom what's for dinner and she says, your favorite. She puts a bowl in front of him. He gets a cup of water and he begins to eat. And like most moms, and I remember mine, she sat down and said, what'd you do today, Saul? And Saul continued to eat and he said, well, I went downtown. Well, Saul, what did you do today? Well, I went downtown with the boys. You know, we threw some rocks. We threw some rocks at the wall. We threw some rock rocks in the well. Saul, she said, what did you do today? And she paused, as only moms can pause, and said, Saul, I heard about Stephen. Uh, in mid-stride, in mid -stride, he set the spoon back into the bowl. He got up, walked away, walked out of the house, and his mother saw him walk down the road. We know what Saul did after that. Uh, according to the lesson today, he wreaked havoc. The good news for Saul and the good news for Saul's mom is his walk to Emmaus changed his life, just like the walk to Emmaus that many of our friends here do uh, that we know. And he saw the light, and of course, we now are enjoying all the great work that Saul has written and has done. Now, there are a couple of other fellas uh, that were mentioned in our lessons. Uh, Philip was mentioned. In fact, there are two Phillips. I didn't realize that. There's a Philip the Apostle who's mentioned in John, and then there's Philip, who was uh, an evangelist. I found out that he was one of those seven people chosen to look after the folks uh, during all of the time um, uh, of Jesus's uh, passing. Uh, but those two Philips, and then of course, so you'll hear a little bit in a moment about Thomas. And then of course, Stephen was the martyr. He's the one that got rocked. He's the one that was stunned. You know, they, they say that, that timing is everything. Isn't it interesting when we read what John is saying um, uh, that, that the timing is important because that conversation with Thomas and Philip and Jesus and, 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 the, and the guys, as I'll call them, they're trying to find a routine. What are we going to do? What's going to happen? Um, you know, Thomas, the doubters, finally begin to see. And Jesus, as only he could, as they were asking him questions and he was posing questions, said, you mean you all have been with me all this time and you didn't know it was me, you didn't know who I was. Um, thank goodness for those who believe in me and have not seen me. You know, that's us. You know, we believe, we have not seen, but when we look around, we have seen everything that he does. Those words, again, are very refreshing in John. Um, we, we hear him say that, um, ask, um, lift up, your words to me in prayer, asking it will be given. Uh, that's exactly what we've been doing these past several days. We've been raising people's names in the situation that we're in. Um, you know, let not your heart be troubled, he said. And yeah, I'm sure there's some troubled times, but you know, we're gonna get through these times as only we have been able to get through these times. So let me close by saying um, the, the following. I paraphrase a lot of things, 
Um, one of the paraphrases that I've come to use in the last several weeks is, um, just when we thought we've stood all we can stand and we can stand no more, I believe emphatically we've only been strengthened for the next goods that will occur in life and the next not so goods that will occur in life. Um, our friends, our family, our faith, this community, our church, uh, it will be that, that part of our lives that will sustain us and pull us through. And the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train that's going to run us over but it's a train that we're all going to get on and we're going to ride blessedly and forward looking into the future uh, as we bring our new priest on, as we uh, determine what's next in the life of St. John's and what's next in the life of this community and what's next in our lives. So thanks for joining us this morning. Come to St. John's and worship with us. We'll always have a seat at our table for you. It's all good and it's all God.